In the previous video, we were looking at simplifying exponential expressions using factorizing, and we started with highest common factor. I gave you all these steps. We went through a few examples in the previous video, so watch that first if you haven't yet. We're going to try a few more examples. I would love if you would pause the screen, try the examples first, and then mark with me. Right, here's your first one. So, if you've done it, let's mark. So, write all bases in terms of prime numbers, if applicable. Now, we will see later on if we feel like this is very necessary. Yes, you can write 4 as 2 to the power of 2, and you may do that. It may or may not be helpful in the sum, because I don't see another 4 in the sum. I don't think it's going to be helpful, but if you do it, it won't, work. It won't hurt. Then, rewrite roots. We don't have roots. Break up or rewrite powers to help see what the common factor is. Remember I said in a previous video, you don't have to do this if you, don't, if you see it and you don't feel like it's necessary. But if you do feel like it's necessary and it helps, rewriting this just in a slightly different format. They're the same thing and I've discussed in previous videos why they're the same thing. So if you don't know, you have to go watch those videos. So just rewriting everything like this. That's perfect. For some students, it really helps you see what the highest common factor is. Remember, if you are multiplying, which I'm doing here, you keep the bases, you add the exponents. It takes you back here. So I haven't changed anything. So that is what I mean by step three. It's not necessary, but it's helpful. Then we're going to take out the common factor. Now, I have two terms at the top. What is the common factor? Three to the power of X is appearing in both of them. So three to the power of X. Then you open your leftover brackets. Take the first term divided by 3 to the power of x. What are you left over with? 3 to the power of 1 or 3. Take your second term divided by 3 to the power of x. You're left with negative 4 multiplied by 3 to the power of negative 1. This negative drops down into the bracket, but what stays between the 4 and the 3 to the power of negative 1 is a multiplication, okay? Then at the bottom, I don't need to factorize because it's one term. So 3 to the power of x multiplied by 3 to the power of negative 2. Now is when you may cancel if you feel like it's necessary, and it definitely is. Remember, you can only cancel when you have one term at the top, which this is one term, and one term at the bottom. So I can cancel 3 to the power of x and 3 to the power of x at the top of the fraction. At this stage is when you can pretty much enter it into your calculator. But essentially at the top of the fraction, you have 3 minus 4 multiplied by 1 over 3. Okay, because 3 to the power of negative 1 is 1 over 3. And then at the bottom of the fraction, you have 1 over 9. Where do I get the 9 from? This can be rewritten as 1 over 3 to the power of 2 and 3 to the power of 2 is 9. So at that stage, you can type it into your calculator and you should get your answer as being 15. Now, if they say do not use your calculator at all and show all the intermediate steps, you actually have to go and work with fractions like we did in grade 8 and 9 and do all those intermediate steps that I did not do here. Okay, I hope you got the answer correct. Let's try another one. Right, in this one. Okay, step one, write all bases, if applicable, in terms of prime numbers. So we can see that the top of the fraction is all good. It's already in prime numbers. The four can be rewritten as two to the power of two. It may not be necessary, but let's do it anyway. And then under the root, the nine to the power of x can be rewritten as nine can be rewritten as three to the power of two, and that is raised to the power of x. Now, just for the sake of simplifying, so I don't have to write an extra step, remember, 9 is raised to the exponent of x. So 3 to the power of 2, in brackets, needs to be raised to the exponent of x. But I know I'm going to eventually do power or exponent inside, multiplied by exponent outside. So essentially, it's 3 to the power of 2x. I hope that makes sense. Now, that's step 1, done. Step two, rewrite the roots. So this is the root that I'm talking about. Rewrite the roots as powers with rational exponents, if applicable. So it is applicable here because I have a root here. So basically, the top of the fraction stays the same. 2 to the power of 2 stays over there. Remember, how do we rewrite this? I did a whole video on how to do this. You take this over here. So we've got a base of 3. So we're going to keep that base of 3 over here. Then you take the inside over here, divided by the outside. What number is there? 
Well, it's a square root, so it's a 2. So 2x, the inside, divided by the outside, divided by 2. And yes, you can say, okay, but ma'am, 2x divided by 2 is just x. You are more than welcome to just write x there at this stage. So 2x divided by 2, which is x. So that is step 2 done. Now, remember, step three is only relevant if you really feel like you can't see what the common factor is. Some people will be able to look at this and they'll be able to see, okay, three to the power of x is the common factor. And then what's left over in term one is two multiplied by three to the power of negative one. But some people can see where I get the two from, but they can't understand where I get three to the power of negative one from. For those people, that's why I put step three in there. So all that step three does, if you need it, use it. If you don't need it, don't use it. All that it does is it takes something here, like where there's two terms in the exponent, and it breaks it up like this. Remember why it works? If the bases are the same, you keep the base. Like here, we kept the base. We add the exponent. So x plus minus 1. So x minus 1. So it's the same thing. And same thing on this side. This, I just rewrote as this. Now, what I can do is factorize. So I've got two terms at the top. What do they have in common? 3 to the power of x. What's left over? From the first term, so divide the first term by the highest common factor, 2 and 3 to the power of negative 1. What's left over from the second term? So take the second term and divide it by your highest common factor, 3. Remember, the plus gets carried down, 3 to the power of 1. At the bottom, I can't factorize. So you leave it as is. Now, because I have one term at the top, one term at the bottom, I can cancel those. And then essentially... This is what I have in my numerator and my denominator. You can do baby step maths in between if you don't have a calculator. But what you end up getting is 11 over 12. I really hope that those examples were helpful. In the next video, we will go over the difference of two squares method.